Hi everyone, I'm Jane at Rack and Worms. What we're gonna do tonight is we're gonna check in on my little no mite bin experiment. And if I have mites, this is gonna be a very short video. Um, if I don't have mites, then I am going to then show you an older, former sort of breeder bin that also does not have mites. And I wanna to talk to you about why I think my breeder bins don't have mites, okay? So let's go in to the little experiment bin first. As a recap, I have 50 adult worms in here. <clears throat> and uh, with uh, pre-compost, oh look at, they're making cocoons. Can you see that? Right there, they're making cocoons already. And that makes sense, these are breeders. I'm not running it as, here's another cocoon over here. I'm not running it as a breeder bin, but they are breeders. They're going to breed, okay. So this is uh, pre-compost, and you can see again, the biota that is in here. All those little white specks. Here's one of the worms. You know, the worms are looking pretty good for uh, just being fed uh, cabbage leaves here, which uh, I'm gonna feed them again right now with that. But you can see that nice clotellum. This one's gonna be casting off the cocoon very shortly. All right, so in here I have already fed them uh, only cooked, pressure cooked cabbage leaves, nothing else. I fed it to them twice and I am not seeing any mites. And I'm gonna ask the cameraman to scan slowly, as close as he can, in focus. The surface of this bin, let's move it a little bit closer to him, to see if any mites are apparent, okay? And if you see any mites, let me know, okay? Because I don't always catch everything. In fact, in the first setup video, one of the eagle-eyed uh, commenters said that they did see a little white thing move in uh, the setup video, and he was absolutely right. It was there. I'm not sure that it was a mite. It could have been a white mite, um, or it could have been some other, you know, little critter, but it definitely was not the brown or red mites that I'm kind of gunning for in this video. So I'm not seeing any indication of the mites, okay? And I don't know if that little critter is still in there or not, or, you know, if it died. Oh, you saw it? Okay, so there is some little white critter, three. Okay, three little white critters in here. So I'm gonna have to find out what they are. But as far as the brown mites go, you know, we're not seeing any of those. But look at that cocoon. That's kind of nice, huh? All right, so let me do uh, a quick feeding on them, and I'm gonna have to come back and do a little uh, digging in here to find out what those white critters are. Okay, so um, when I checked on them, there's 50, 50 worms in here. There they are. Look at them. Beauties, beauties. Look at that clotellum, holy cow. This one's getting ready to cast a cocoon as well. Um, there were just a couple little small pieces of um, cabbage left. So I'm gonna give them another little feeding of cabbage. Again, with the Instapot to kill off any uh, mite eggs that uh, could have been on the cabbage leaves when I brought it home from the store. I'm actually getting my cabbage leaves for free from a local grocery store. I talked to the store manager and he said, basically, if I didn't molest any of the, you know, for sale cabbages, I could have any of the leaves that, you know, people peel off when they buy them. And uh, that's been a real boon for me for uh, getting, you know, free worm food. So I'm all about that. So big shout out to him. All right. Now, so that's the cabbage, and I am going to give them one additional food this time. And what it is, is a couple of beets from the back of my refrigerator that got a little neglected and forgotten about and had a little mold on the container. So not for human consumption anymore. But 
I feel comfortable adding these beads into the worm bin and not inadvertently adding in any mites or mite eggs because your canned vegetables are pressure processed. It's part of the canning process. It's part of the sealing process of the cans themselves. So I am fairly confident. And if anybody knows different, please, you know, educate me and the rest of us. But I'm fairly confident that there would be no surviving mite eggs in our canned goods. Okay. So again, I feel fairly confident that I'm not inadvertently adding any mite eggs into the feed zone by giving them a slightly different, uh, you know, food variety this time. Now, the last thing I'm going to add is just a little sprinkle of grit. This is um, oyster, oyster shells that I've put through my uh, grain mill, which by the way, I am so happy with that grain mill. I'm going to have to do a little video on that because that thing is awesome and worth you know, saving up to buy. Okay, so this is oyster shell. I am, again, fairly confident that there's no mite eggs in the oyster shell, okay? So this is the feet. So now I'm just gonna cover them back up and, uh, you know, get them back to work. And like I said, come back and check on what those other three little things are, but no brown or red mites so far. So that at least is good. Now I am gonna, bring up a, a breeder bin that is a double breeder bin. So I don't really consider it to be a full breeder, you know, full on breeder bin because there's just um, too many worms in here for, the, for me to get the kind of uh, cocoons I want from them. But they're, again, they're gonna be breeding. And I have also, um, you know, kind of let this bin go for a while. So I'm sure there's a lot of small worms in here as well. And that kind of means it's turning into a grow up. And here's a small worm, small wisp right here, okay? So I'm considering this more of a grow out bin at this point. All right, so let me bring back the, the newspaper here for just a minute so you can see it. Um, and again, what we're looking for is any sign of the brown mites. Um, and basically, I can tell you that in my breeder bins, I don't get mites. Now, why don't I get mites in my breeder bins? But I do absolutely get mites in my grow up bins. And I think there's a couple reasons for that. One, I feed the breeder bins worm chow and veggie powder plus the amendments, okay? And the worm chow and the veggie powder do, I'm sorry, what, what do you want me to do? Okay, <laughs> my cameraman's giving me a signal here and I'm like, what? Okay, yep, back to the worms. Sorry about that. Um, the worm chow and the veggie powder could have mite eggs in them. And again, it's something I'm gonna be exploring when in that mite-free you know, little shoe box I showed you at the beginning. Um, but if there are mite eggs in, in those two food items, there are very, very few. And I think that's important because when I set up, let me just turn over so again, you can just look at something more interesting. There you go. Look at these worms. They are they are good. They do need a little feeding up though, I'll tell you. I'll admit that. I'm gonna give them a nice feed and here's a little, again, baby from them. Okay. Since I put about 800 worms into a breeder bin in about two and a half to three gallons of bedding and I leave them alone for the 21 weeks, um, they're consuming a lot, the vast majority of whatever is edible in that bin. And guess what? Mite eggs that any mites lay in that bin 
if they were in there to begin with, I believe are being consumed by the worms. My eggs are teeny tiny microscopic, you know, dot looking egg size. So the worm just says, hey, that's food, baby, and sucks it into its mouth. So the mites that might huh, start in a breeder bin are just completely overwhelmed by the number of active adult worms in the bin. And the adult worms just eat all the egg mites that might be there. Eventually, you know, the adult mites will die because they don't live very long. And obviously once they die, they don't make new eggs. The worms are consuming the eggs and boom, suddenly I have a mite free bin without me doing anything special to it. Okay, so I hope you kind of followed that along. And I also want to say um, that when I set up a brand new breeder bin and I'm pulling breeders out of my grow out bins, I'm pulling these breeders out of bins that have mites in them. Okay, so there is no reason for me not to expect that there are, you know, a random mite egg or two or ten stuck to a random breeder going into a new breeder bin. But again, the number is so small compared to the number of active worms just scooming through their bin, sucking up any possible food particle. These worms are just eradicating any possible mite infestation before it even has a chance to get off the ground. All right, so there's one of the uh, ideas that I have why my mites are very low to none in my breeder bins. All right, let me know what you think about what I'm thinking. Am I, you know, missing something? Do you think I'm onto something? Um, how can, you know, you use maybe this to, you know, again, help control the mites in your bin if that's what you want to do, especially your breeder bins. All right. So give me some comments. Let me know what, you know, you think about what I'm talking about here. And, um, you know, as always, if this is kind of the topics you want to learn more about, you want to hear more about what I'm doing as far as experimenting goes, you know, let me know. Give me that feedback because if you let me know this is what you're interested in, I'm willing to make more videos regarding it. All right. So until next time, you have a good evening and I'll always remain yours in the dirt, Jane.